everybody. Welcome to City Girls Pod. And this is the show where we're looking at back episodes of Sex in the City. And today we are talking about uh, season three, episodes seven, eight, and nine. And it's always a lot of fun. I am film critic Rachel Wagner and Jax is here. Hello. How are you doing? Really good, Rachel. We're back on track. Yeah. <laughs> we're back on track with these three apps. Lots of things to say, lots of things about the characters that annoyed me but I'm feeling good about the storytelling yeah I wish we'd had time to bring our uh Carrie is the worst friend (laughs) because yeah the I think she would have some thoughts about these ones (laughs) oh I sure do Especially the last one. All right. Well, let's dive in. We have our first episode is called Drama Queens. And basically, Carrie is freaking out about nothing. She's like inventing problems. Hardcore. uh, Because evidently Aiden's too perfect. And he's doing everything that she wanted Big to do. Uh, But I, I have to say, I think what always stopped me from being on the Carrie Aiden ship is i i don't know that they have that great of chemistry i do think she has better chemistry with big even though it's not a, you know not as good of a relationship there is a spark i think i think that's maybe a little missing between her and aiden yeah it, it's interesting though like i think what's hard to watch about this is that it's so clear that Aiden is just such a good guy and he's very Mm -hmm. good to her. And a lot of times I I only learned about this recently and, you know, reading about how the human brain works and in especially like romantic relationships, but some people, if they're used to being in relationships where there's conflict, they equate that with excitement and with chemistry and I think that's what Carrie's doing in this situation but really she's just used to being in a toxic relationship with big yeah yeah I mean yeah I think you're right there is probably something to the to the 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 toxic the conflict that you know like that love is uh, I mean that hate is just the uh, is just the opposite of love mm-hmm. but they have the same passion yeah so the, it can get <laughs> can get, get confusing sometimes i um, mean he wants her to meet his parents and i did think it was cute when she's like parents have always been my thing i they think i'm <laughs> adorable <laughs> and i get it carrie is adorable yeah now your fiance is from england correct yeah he grew up in england and his dad's french and his mom is from england Okay. So have you gotten to meet his, his parents yet? Yeah. I love, his, I love his parents. I will mm-hmm. say that, um, the intro to his mom was really, really soon and probably sooner than it should have been. Like we weren't even really dating exclusively. And I felt like I was a little nervous and she looked at him when we were at the table together and was like, She's a lovely girl, but I can't understand a word she's saying. Because <laughs> he'd never dated an American before that he had introduced to his parents. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> like, what the heck is this? But we're, we all really get along now. That's good. That's good. Were you nervous about introducing him to your, your family? Yes. My mom has gotten along with everyone I've dated. My dad is a little bit more of a stickler when it, it's like the stereotypical, but yeah, he, Alex had to work to impress my dad, but now my dad just loves him. But the first time he met my dad, my dad had left a photo up of me and my ex-boyfriend at his house. So like, that was like staring at us. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. So I definitely, Meeting the parents makes me nervous. And I see why Carrie is sort of thrown off by it. But I don't think, did you think that Aiden was moving too quickly? Or did you just think he was like excited to share his life? Or how did you view the whole situation? I didn't think that he was moving too quickly. It is a huge contrast too big. Because, you know, Big didn't want to introduce her to his mom. There's 
you know, just really slow. Uh, so I can understand why I guess Carrie is a little bit shocked, but I don't know. I, I guess it didn't feel too fast for me because I think I would probably in real life move very fast. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you liked the person, yeah. you know, yeah. and you thought that they would fit well with your family. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I've just been waiting so long. I, I just think, it, and, and I am the kind of person that once I made my decision, I, uh, that's it. You know, I, I know when I know, so I do yeah, not imagine that I would date for a long, now there's anything wrong with that. I just think for me, I probably would get it done <laughs> real quick. <laughs> like, all right, we know what we want. Let's go for this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we also have Miranda and Steve and they are getting into a bit of a rut. Um, and she doesn't like doing his laundry. He's skid skid marks guy. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about skid marks for a second. Um, why is it a thing that guys have like fairly regularly? I don't want to judge it, and I'm not saying that if I haven't been feeling well, things have not been great. But I'm saying that I think for guys, it's more of a regular occurrence. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea. <laughs> they should just do their own laundry, clearly. You, we try and keep this, you know, somewhat PG-13. This is the dirtiest we're going to get. It's filthy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What do you think? I, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I've never thought about it before about guys and their I have because I've encountered it. I'm not, I'm not, not with my fiance and I'm not even going to say it was with the boyfriend, but I've done, um, I've done lots of people's laundry. Um, I've done it for guy friends. I've worked for people and done their laundry. Like so I've encountered laundry and I will say that this is not something that is uncommon. Yeah. I mean, I do have to say that <laughs> some parts of it just like that make a little bit more sense about Steve. I still think it was an abomination, but nevertheless, that part of it was an abomination. The, I, cause I remember saying like, how could he be so like clueless about his relationship? And I still think like nobody goes 10 years. That was ridiculous, but he does get pretty comfortable pretty quick. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, he sure does. And but Miranda seems to be like enjoying this routine that they're falling into. Like, I don't think she loves doing the laundry, but she is enjoying having this quiet time with him. But then we see that change over the course of the mm -hmm. next two episodes. But um, it is nice to see her falling into this sort of routine with someone that cares about her that she cares about. Yeah. It just, I, I could understand, I guess, why he could get into a comfortable relationship. I, I, I got his character just like a tiny bit more than, uh, yeah. but I still think they, they did him wrong. I still, but uh, we also have Samantha. She's dating a doctor, Dr. Mark Raskin. And basically he takes Viagra just for fun. And yeah. Then she starts taking it, which I guess women can take it. I was, uh, I, I Googled it and yes, I felt like women can take it, but I would never ever take a prescription medicine. That's not been prescribed to you by a doctor. I think that is very stupid. Uh, but yeah, yeah like a doctor that not like a doctor that you're sleeping with rather than is your actual right, right. primary care. It was wild to me. And aside from, I think your point, Rachel, is exactly right. Aside from the fact that it's Viagra and that's the plot line, I think it's wild that she's taking stuff that hasn't been prescribed. But I have a, a very good friend that uh, used to date a doctor and she used to really reap the benefits of what he would prescribe her and I would always be so worried like um are you sure that's okay do you know what you're taking and like yeah 
It felt a little wild to me. These aren't like Tic Tacs. That's a, it's a, you can't just be, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was wild. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, so then we also have, uh, they, uh, Charlotte has a book called uh, Marriage Incorporated. And, uh, and she starts out by saying that the biggest, one of the biggest things you shouldn't do is spend time around desperate women. Like, it's like, okay. Oh, that was obviously a huge eye roll for me because I don't think single women are desperate and spent not spending time with your single friends. However, mm-hmm. I did like the idea. And there was a book that I read years ago that was written by a woman who got her MBA at Harvard. That was about the fact that if you do want a relationship, that it's something that you do to prioritize in your life, like you would prioritize anything else and being like, oh, it's just going to happen is not always the best way to get what you want. So I liked that idea of it, but I thought that the method of her going about it was completely bonkers. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, I think that, um, I, I think that, yeah, having a conscientious sort of goal and attitude about it is smart. Um, one I should probably adopt myself, but no, I but also, what I will say about you, Rachel, you're open to it. Like, I think a lot of people won't even say things. They're like, don't set me up. I'm not open to it. Your oh, yeah. heart and mind are open. So I just want to give you a pat. Oh, thanks. That. As we know, I'll have a meal with anybody. If you, if you know someone that's nice that would go on a date with 41 year old from Utah, put in the comments. The, the, the way you, I always think about that because it makes me laugh so hard because I, I agree as well. And that was absolutely my attitude when I was dating. I'll have a meal with anybody. I'll have a coffee with anyone. I'll go for a walk with anybody. Yeah. Anyone can buy me some ice cream. Let's talk. It'll be great. <laughs> Take me to a play. Oh my gosh. Oh really yeah. want to drop some cash. Win my heart. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I would be hesitant to set a year goal like she does. I, I do think the, the conscientiousness is good. The it's going to happen a year is probably a mistake. I mean, because the, the thing about dating is that it's not all up to you. It's not like a goal where I can set, I'm going to lose 20 pounds or I'm going to whatever some goal that might be really difficult, but I can do it because it's just me. Uh, this it's, there's another human involved. And so you can't really just set a goal that I'm going to be married in a year. Well, I think that's a really good point. And, and they always tell you whether it's something like this or whatever goal you're setting only set the goal for things you can achieve. So if Charlotte wants to say, I'm going to go to five singles mixers. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask five friends to set me up on a date, but you can't control what other people do. You can only control what you do. So yeah, I think that also this goal is really unrealistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so then uh, Carrie goes to the opera with Charlotte <laughs> and I hated Carrie's opera dress so much. I thought it, I don't know. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. I, and also I was annoyed with her at the opera. (laughs) Well, yeah, we'll talk more about that, but I did like the dress when she's talking to Miranda. Um, she has a blue dress with like a gold belt. I loved that dress. That was really pretty. You know, what's interesting. I love that dress too. And I thought, I didn't know if you would like it. I thought you could go either way because the the gold belt was kind of ornate and like huge, but I thought it looked really cool. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the belt was made, I could have, she could have just had on the dress, although it does, when you put the belt on, it sort of cinches the waist a little bit more, which is flattering, but, uh, but I, I, I liked it. I thought it was a really good look and, but I did not like the opera dress. Did you agree? Yeah, I didn't like it. I thought Charlotte looked lovely for the opera. Yeah. Uh, So Carrie is looking through her opera glasses uh, and she sees Big and Natasha. And I also thought it was kind of weird how they were both her and Charlotte were both like chomping gum. 
at the at opera. The opera. I know. <laughs> you know, like I, especially Charlotte, I would not expect her to be like, I don't know. That seems like something that you do, I guess, at a baseball game or something like that. Not at an opera. Yeah, I think that's a really good point that Charlotte was a surprising one too, because maybe I could see the jump of like Carrie has like an oral fixation now that she's not smoking. Yeah. She's like constantly chewing gum or like sucking on a lollipop or whatever. I could see that. Yeah. But Charlotte, there's no way. I don't even think Charlotte would chew gum, period, let alone at the opera. That's true. There is that like Nicorette gum that it could be that. But I don't know. It just looked weird to me yeah. it's like kind of slovenly <laughs> yeah <laughs> the opera and I mean people wear jeans at the opera these days the people don't even dress up anymore I'm including myself um but uh but I just uh I don't know I thought that was weird uh she sees big and then of course big is also looking at her uh and they she she sees big and then uh she basically ditches charlotte leaves the opera and uh, then calls miranda in the middle of the night i will Uh, say there was that little moment when they saw each other with the with the opera mm -hmm. binoculars is that what they're called I think they're called opera glasses. Opera glasses, opera glasses. I knew I had it wrong. (laughs) Uh, The opera glasses that my heart did do a little flip-flop pitter-patter because it was a really cute interaction. But I think the fact that she left and ditched her friend and that he chased her out, like that to me was problematic and just kind of icky. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why she couldn't just be like, elbow, elbow, I I gotta leave whatever something i mean just to just ditch your friend and i like the miranda was kind of like you just left <laughs> so she, and she made it. that joke she's like you know carrie asks her if charlotte's mad and she's like she's swearing off women forever which i just thought was a cute yeah one. i mean it was at the same time that i say that i understand steve's character a little bit more and then just like that i do feel like that the assault on miranda's character is all the more apparent in this uh um a one watching sex in the city because she's like a good friend to carrie she is not the person that's going to let her pee the bed uh when she's yeah. watching her that, that's just not who miranda is yeah absolutely and i think there's there's times in our life when we're like better versions of ourselves and like maybe better friends to other people. But I think that it'd be one thing if Miranda was a little wrapped up in herself and a little selfish, but what she does to Carrie in that situation, it's like, not only is she not helping her in her time of like physical and emotional need, she's doing stuff with her boss in her apartment. Like it's all these things that if it was one or two of those things, it could make sense. But all of that is just so out of character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So Charlotte also goes to dinner with a couple friend of hers. And I forgot, I forgot to round it. I forgot to write down the woman's name, but the guy's name was Dennis. And they keep telling her about this guy, Phil, that she needs to meet. And that that's great. And so she keeps trying to, Dennis is supposed to set it up. I think he works with them or something like that. And uh, she keeps trying to call Dennis and get him to uh, set her up with Phil. Uh, So she goes to meet Phil and Dennis is there instead. And he's like, I, you know, I'm into you, all this stuff. And uh, yeah, so Dennis is the worst. (laughs) Oh my goodness. I mean, it, it is so cringe. It is so disrespectful to his wife. And to Charlotte, I absolutely love how Charlotte handles it. Um, it was creepy, though, the number of times that she called him. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little intense. I mean, just that's just not how if somebody it, it, it was interesting that 
that was a real example of he's just not that into you, which of course is part of this show. Yes. Like, I don't know when that comes up, but. I don't know either, but I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And so then she storms out of the club and she almost gets hit by a, a, a she almost gets hit by a car and it turns out that's how she meets Trey McDougal, played by Kyle McLaughlin. And what do you think about Trey? So knowing what we know about everything that comes down the pipeline with Trey, he's not the greatest guy for her. But what I will say is in this episode, I loved their me cute. And yeah. although yeah. he's not the kind of guy I would ever be attracted to, I do think he's wonderfully matched for charlotte what we know right now what mm-hmm. do you think yeah i mean i agree i think they uh, do have good chemistry and uh there is something about vehicle uh accidents whatever that's uh, managed to be a meet cute in a lot of romantic comedies including hallmark movies <laughs> yep works well I'm like maybe that's my problem i just don't uh, i have too reliable a car <laughs> I Rachel, you're another. not like getting in a car accident or getting hit by a car we need to switch it up if you want to find the love of your life i, I need to be a, a damsel in distress a, a, a little i need to put my life at risk frequently i think you're that's just the capable that's the yeah, issue i guess i think so yeah <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's basically the episode. Carrie says you know, that you have to take a leap of faith uh, with Aiden because you're a good man. Yeah, I would be so annoyed with Carrie if I was Aiden. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I also thought I love that she met his parents because I thought that he seemed happy about it, but I just wouldn't show up like that without the second go ahead and then call him out of the restaurant like the way she knocks on the window like I'm entitled to your time right now it's like he's with his parents I know we invited you but now you're doing this weird talking outside thing like I don't know she just makes me wildly uncomfortable the way she centers herself in every situation yeah yeah I mean she's just so self-absorbed she doesn't I mean, and we'll see that in the third episode we're talking about, but she, she just doesn't care about how her actions impact other people enough. Mm -hmm. So what would you give this episode one to 10? I would give this one, I'm going to give it a 7.5. I think it's important that we meet Trey. I liked that meet cute. Interesting storylines and i'm i'm definitely feeling happier than i was with our last trio of episodes yeah. what about well, you yeah i mean that's i think that's good we also uh, steve and miranda discover the the dryer is exciting <laughs> they can spice things up even laundry can be sexy yeah absolutely <laughs> we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast bethany house publishers and becky wade's newest release Turn to me. Summer is the perfect time for romance, and Becky Waite's contemporary romances always deliver. Her compelling Misty River romance series is set in the picturesque Blue Ridge Mountains and follows the love stories of friends bound by a life changing event. The perfect combination of intrigue, romance, and wit. This is a series you will not want to put down. Get 40% off and free shipping at bakerbookhouse.com. When you purchase any of the Misty River Romance novels with the promo code Misty River 40. That's bakerbookhouse.com and code Misty River 40. So the next episode is called The Big Time. And in this episode, you have uh, that, uh, that the girl's talking a lot about menopause because we learn that Samantha is a bit older than the rest of the girls. When she said that line, I laughed so hard. She said, girls, I have something to tell you. <laughs> when she said that she was a little older, I was like, yeah, we, we know Samantha and we love you for it. Uh, and Steve wants to have a baby with Miranda, um, but they get a puppy instead, which may be more work. I don't know. 
any on the all of, my, all of my friends that get puppies have to do all the same stuff that you would with the newborn. Like they have to like go home early. They're up all night with the dog. They're taking the dog out mm-hmm. six times a day. I mean, it's a yeah, lot my sister working. just got a puppy and it's, <laughs> I haven't even seen her for like months. Yes. <laughs> It consumes people. <laughs> what kind of puppy yeah, did she yeah. get? Oh, I forget the kind. It's like the same kind that it's like a little poofy, um, little poofy dog. I don't know what it's oh, like. Oh, like the, the, kind of the um, is it brown? Yeah, it's, it's very close to the kind of dog that Elle Woods has, but it's not a chihuahua. That's what I was thinking. It looks kind of like that dog. Okay. That's what I was picturing. I don't know that. Yeah. I mean, my, my siblings have all of a sudden become like animal people. We, we didn't grow up having a lot of animals because my, my, uh, my siblings closest to an age, my older brother, particularly were super allergic, uh, to animals. And my brother, uh, one time was, we were at a, um, llama farm whatever and he's petting the the llamas and his eye was just blew up like a huge and i had to go to the hospital it was very scary so we never had animals growing up because of that uh but now my younger brother has like three cats and a dog (laughs) and then now my sister has a a dog and then my other sister also has a dog so yeah it's and and animals love me i'm not the big of an animal first because they didn't grow up you know around them yeah you weren't but, but nevertheless i mean as soon as i come into a room they love me. <laughs> they can sense your soul that's why because you're a good person and animals know yeah they do i think <laughs> um, would you think about getting an animal I've thought about it and definitely during quarantine, I thought about it, but uh, I haven't, I haven't taken the plunge, I guess. Cats are easier, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we also have them talking about when they lost their flower. Um, and uh, that. <laughs> Uh, Carrie says she was in the 11th grade. So that's a little peek into the Carrie diaries that we're going to be watching eventually. (laughs) That's exactly what I thought when we were, when that came on, I was like, I wonder, I'm sure they're very authentic with that. And also she described it as being really lackluster. Right. (laughs) I mean, I would imagine that the first time is not the best for most people. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting also depending on when you decide to do it. Um, I, without getting too involved in my sex life, I waited till after college. Mm-hmm. And most of my friends were in high school or college. So like, I was already like fully, fully an adult. Right. right. And I think that that might make a little bit of a difference and how well you know the person um, because- I yeah, mean, I'm just yeah. guessing when you're like 15 and just kind of like pawn right. around, I'm not sure how good it can be. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So Samantha has this like kind of flirty neighbor, but evidently she doesn't like him. She thinks he's a loser, which I don't know why they just, he just why he was a loser, but evidently. Okay. Yeah. Here's what I think, Rachel. They want us to think he's a loser because of like the way he looks or something or whatever. But actually I thought he was a loser because I didn't like the way he boxed her in at the mailbox. I thought Mm -hmm. it was really aggressive and creepy. And I truly think even if he was a complete, you know, Greek God, of a man, I'd be like, that's disrespectful. So yeah, that's why yeah. I didn't like him. But I feel like the way they're telling the story, we're supposed to not like him because of like whatever other reason, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah, I I, I felt like, yeah, he was pretty aggressive, but uh, if, if he had been 
a conventionally attractive person, I think Samantha would have been into that. Yeah. That's the thing. So she's, she is, she is pretty picky. Like we think of her as being super free spirit, but again, I've said it before. She's not a hippie. She's not just like free love all the place. No, no, not at all. Um, and so she's upset about the fact that she hasn't had her period in 35 days. I think is what she says. And, uh, the, I think it was funny when, when Charlotte's like all four of us synced up except Samantha, (laughs) she's so so excited about that. (laughs) Um, Yeah. (laughs) And, uh, then she gets her period when she's with this guy and it it was kind of funny. This is like $2,000 sheets. (laughs) Yeah. I laughed pretty hard at that and also it sort of made me think like sure I get you're upset but also like obviously she didn't do it on purpose and that's a biological function of a woman so bet- you better react better yeah. yeah yeah well so Carrie goes to this event on a boat for a magazine did I write down the gab it's called and do you feel like big is purposely going to events that Carrie, he knows Carrie will be at. Yes, Rachel. Yes, I do. Because although it's the show and New York City, I do end up running into people randomly that you don't think you would. It's, he said, I thought I would see you here. Like, I definitely think he's targeting her. Mm -hmm. Do we remember what Big's job is? Is he just sort of nondescript business guy? I think so. And I don't even think it's anything as specific as like, not that this is even specific, but like, is he in finance? Is he an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't know. I think you're right. It's like a nondescript business guy. He does deals in multiple cities and has a ton of money. He is kind of the bad man of business. (laughs) That archetype. You're absolutely right about that. (laughs) Uh, And uh, yeah, so I guess he can just go to all these different things and and hope to see her. And I don't know. Uh, They they run into each other. I did like Carrie. I liked both Charlotte's dress. She had like a flower, yellow flower dress. Uh, And then I also liked uh, Carrie's blue dress at the, uh, this was a pretty good fashion episode, actually. Yeah, I thought they looked beautiful. And actually, I want to, because I know you and I are both going to rip her to pieces in the next episode. I do want to give Carrie props on how she handled the boat situation, especially the first interaction. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really respectful. She's talking about her boyfriend. She's not flirting with Big. She tries to end the conversation early. I just thought she was really really being a, a stand-up gal mm-hmm. yeah and i mean that people say oh you can still be friends with your ex but i think the problem is that i i feel like rarely would you both be on exactly sort of the same page like usually somebody's more involved with the breakup than in that than another person you know that that one person is i feel like you almost always will have one person that's still a little more attached, a little more in love. And so I feel like it's just not smart. Yeah. Especially with a relationship as intense as Carrie and Biggs. I mean, Mm. I think that the exes that I'm able to be friends with are either if we dated when we were super young or if we just like didn't have that intense of a either physical or romantic connection. Like otherwise it's yeah. Yeah. And, and so I also liked, there were two other good looks in this episode. I liked Miranda. She's wearing like a, it's a rainbow triangle dress, uh, which I thought was really, really pretty. And then also uh, Carrie, she has a bright blue dress with a big pink flower, which I thought was really pretty. I loved that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Charlotte is playing hard to get with Trey. She's not letting him stay over. 
and uh the she's she feels like that's going to help him be more committed which i think is probably true yeah i mean i think that it depends on what kind of guy you're with um if we're talking about you know women dating men but mm-hmm. like i i think for the type of guy that Trey is, and we find out more about this later to confirm it. I think it's definitely working well. And Charlotte is definitely a rules girl, the the famous book, The Rules. And one of the things in The Rules is it says, you know, you need to not be having sleepovers very early into your relationship. I don't always think that the rules are great to follow, but I, I do think that Charlotte is showing that she wants intention in this relationship and it's kind of doing the same thing that Aiden was doing with Carrie Mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah that's true except for uh, she's holding out a lot longer than Carrie yeah she's holding out I I don't know how uh, what they say in the rules that if you get to seven dates and it hasn't then the guy starts to wonder if you're not interested which I don't think think it's seven yeah yeah it was seven so I don't know if she's, she's following that rule, but nevertheless, she is, she is making him wait. And I, I think that it does build their chemistry. There's something about that pull and uh, um, push and pull that works, I think in her, her, her favor. Yeah. Um, and, and what I like about it is that it's not like she's being cold. She's extremely affectionate with him um all yeah. kissy kissy and like if you're, if you're not showing any signs of affection you're not holding their hand you're not hugging that kind of stuff but she's being very affectionate and then when he says I love you he does he does get a little bit of action yeah. not all the way but I mean you know this strategy <laughs> gets an I love you out of, <laughs> uh, out of him <laughs> so it's working yeah. it really does uh and uh, we find out that Miranda makes partner at work, which is very difficult to do. It's, it's brutal. Yeah. It was difficult to see her relationship with Steve falling apart mm-hmm. while she was working on being partner. And, you know, this was upsetting to me because when you're going through a, I don't even want to say difficult time at work but she's going through a really intense, all-consuming time at work. You can't expect everything in your life to be firing on all cylinders. And that's just not like your romantic relationship. That's like your friendships or your relationship Mm -hmm. with your family or your hobbies or, you know, other things you do in your social life. And I really was disappointed at how easily um, Miranda gave up on her relationship with Steve. Yeah, it's true. I mean, she says, is Steve her, Steve, her baby at this point he wants to, he thinks he wants to have a baby. And it does feel like that's a crazy thing right now. If she's, if she's just made partner, uh, I mean, some people probably do an incredible job with that. And, but uh, I, I do feel like that's asking quite a lot of Miranda to have a child at the time that she's you know dealing with this at work. But I feel like she's not very good at communicating that with Steve and saying, I can't do this because I'm, you know, here's, here's what goes into making partner. This is my priority right now. I I feel like he would understand, you know, that, uh, but they, you know, they get the dog, but then she ends up taking care of it a lot, which I don't understand. I guess Steve, because Steve's at his work. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think Steve saying this was that somewhat coming from someone who really doesn't understand what it takes to raise a child. But I agree with you, Rachel. I think all she had to do was say, we would be great parents. And that's not something that is off the table forever. But for right now, I need to really focus on being partner. And let's revisit this at a later date. And that would have squashed the conversation. I don't think that he's like, it has to happen right now. And I personally, I, I don't think it, well, 
I mean, I think it's risky to, to have a baby without some kind of commitment in your relationship, you know, that, uh, I mean, I, I would, I would personally not have a child with somebody that I'm not married to personally, but I, I, I feel like if you make that choice, no judgment from me, but that I feel like I would want some kind of commitment. Uh, yeah. And I mean, just to like piggyback on that. I mean, not, I, I do take marriage very seriously and I, I hope to be married forever. It's fine if people aren't, but that that's what I'm hoping mm-hmm. for. But what I will say is I do think that having a child is in some ways, you know, the ultimate commitment, because no matter what Mm -hmm. you are in that person's life forever now, or as long as God willing, your, your child is alive and thriving. Like you're never not going to be connected to them. Right. So, I mean, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't want that with someone that I wasn't absolutely certain would be in my life forever. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's a good way to describe it. Um, so Miranda is, gets upset with Steve and she says, it's not going to work. There's not enough good stuff here, which is like, Oh, also, I, I think it's BS. I was really mad. I think there's plenty of good stuff there. I mean, I don't know. I'm just last episode. She was happy that they could just like chill out together. And I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's really, I'm annoyed at her. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so then we have a big showing up at Carrie's house at her apartment and she had, she just said goodbye to Aiden and said, uh, you make me really happy. And Aiden says that. And then, uh, the, she opens the door and there's big and big says, I miss you. His message on the answer machine. I miss you. I can't stop thinking about you. Uh, but it's a year too late. I mean, this is so disrespectful. This is so freaking disrespectful. You were showing up uninvited, unannounced at her apartment when her current boyfriend, who is so wonderful to her, is like leaving and then on his way back and confessing all these things in Vegas Saltish. She's not thinking about how this is going to affect Carrie. Because look, I've been in a situation where I feel like I've made a mistake like that, but you sit with your feelings for a while before you tell the person, because that's a big burden to put on someone. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I just feel like he needs to do some introspection about why he keeps marrying these women and why things aren't working. He seems totally devoid of any kind of introspection and thought that that is spot on that is big to a t i think you're exactly right that he he's not introspective and instead of um reflecting he's so reactionary and it messes things up Mm -hmm. yeah so what would you give this episode one to ten I give this one slightly lower than the other one. I give this seven. Um, you yeah. like this one more? Mm, yeah, I think I can see that. I don't know. They're about, yeah, they're close. They're close. Uh, I also wanted to ask you, so is it true that Manhattan is a place you can get anything at any time, but except your dry cleaning? Oh, Rachel, I wrote this down. <laughs> I wanted to tell you, I related to this 100%. Um, I, well, you know me well, and it, or anyone who does know me probably can guess that I don't get things dry cleaned like ever, but my fiance does and I pick it up for him and take it in. And it is the hardest thing to find when your dry cleaner is open. They shut down randomly and yeah, you can get, you know, Chinese food in the middle of the night. You can go to like the 7-Eleven and get a Slurpee and there's things happening at all times of the day or night, but the dry cleaner and they will not help you out. (laughs) 
That's funny. So it's true. It's true, it's huh? True. Yeah, it's very relatable. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. So then we have the last episode is easy come, easy go. And basically uh, Steve is having a hard time finding an apartment. And I did think that was a really funny scene when she sees the basement apartment. She's like, (laughs) you can't live here. (laughs) It's the doorway to hell. It really was bad though, Rachel. <laughs> it really was. Like, I, I don't think that's, uh, would get approved for human, <laughs> yeah. human yeah. dwelling. <laughs> I've lived in some pretty dodgy places, but not that dodgy. Yeah. And then, so they're having a furniture show uh, at uh, a new designer showcase. And uh, Carrie is uh, managing the booth for Aiden and big and Natasha are there of course and uh big gets pretty sloshed I again was annoyed that big was there although I thought this was an incredible moment you know we don't know big's real name until the very end of the series and I love that when she went to introduce him she spilled coffee all over his crotch yeah <laughs> She's like, he's like, oh, great. I have a great look here. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I would just be so disgusted with big that the way he treats women and I, I wouldn't, I mean, yes, they are attracted to each other and that's not going to go away, but you got to look at like the, the, that only can take you so far. Yeah. And I he mean, it's Natasha, like crap he's awful to her like and it's like we're supposed to like side with big when natasha's like you know she's like oh this furniture isn't really our style and big's talking about how everything is beige it's like well dude like that's the worst thing you can say about her yeah because she's a good person and you're not yeah and he calls aiden daniel boone which I don't even understand. I guess he thought the furniture looked sort of old fashioned or what, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, basically, oh, he's a, like a good guy. So he's Daniel Boone. I don't know. He just is not a good person. And that's the problem is the big is fundamentally not a very good person. Yeah. And you can be sexy and you can be rich and powerful. I was going to say, and funny, but I don't think Big's that funny. He's smart and he's interesting, but mm-hmm. I don't think Big's that funny. So, I mean, to me, if you're not funny, we're in trouble. And if you're not kind, we're in trouble. So Big is not my yeah. man. I mean, and he's just clueless about relationships. I mean, remember the whole McDonald's scene where he, he doesn't understand that Carrie would not want him to go to Paris for a year without talking to it like she's not even saying don't go she's mm-hmm. saying talk to me about it and let's have a conversation I want to be involved in the decision making and he's just so rude yeah he really is and like it's interesting that he what I find interesting about Big and Carrie is that he wasn't willing to marry her but he's been married so many times and he marries Natasha like it's just fascinating to me that he 
I don't know. I don't get it. Like, it's not like he's this forever bachelor that doesn't want to settle down at all. But I think he just has this pattern of like getting into these marriages and then needing to get out of them. Yeah. I mean, and they could say, well, it's, it's not logical. It's love. And again, that that's fine for that attraction, but if you're having a relationship, it needs to be more than just, than just the attraction. Yeah. Attraction is only going to take you so far. And in a, in a long-term relationship, um, whether it's romantic or even if it's a friendship or a relationship with your family, like you need to feel some sort of level of security. And Mm -hmm. I don't think big provides that at all. No. And so Charlotte meets Trey's mother and she is definitely very strange. Yeah. And this is another one of these things that we know what's coming later with, you know, Trey's mom and all the weird stuff she does, but that dinner was uncomfortable or that lunch that they had. Yeah. Well, Charlotte says to Trey, maybe we should get married. And uh, that's when he says, all righty. <laughs> what every woman wants to hear, really. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then he takes her to Tiffany's because it's not a very good engagement story. And so she can pick up. And that was pretty cute. Yeah, I thought it was cute because it's that kind of revisionary history that they say that Charlotte mm-hmm. now tells everyone the story about when right, they Right, yeah. And I think that's kind of <laughs> sweet. Like we yeah. all, you know, create and craft the stories we want to tell. And you could look at that as lying or half truths, but it also is just a nice way to, like, I think that's very true of Charlotte and Trey. And I think that that's, mm-hmm. if they want that to be their engagement story. I actually think that's quite sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you get to uh, help pick out your engagement ring or was it a surprise? Um, I knew I had told Alex that I wanted there to be something from his family and my family. So I, I knew that it was going to be a stone from his grandma who had passed and a stone from my mom. Um, but I didn't, I, I like left the equation after that. So I was like, this is what I would really like, but I didn't really care about much else. I just wanted it to be like a symbol of like our family is coming together. Oh, that's cute. That's, that, that's really cute. We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode. And that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Well, Aiden says that he could help spiff up uh, Carrie's apartment. And, uh, and so he starts, you know, working on some projects, but then it's too loud. And so she goes to the hotel to work. Uh, and, uh, and then, uh, big comes over. Well, he leaves a message and that is something that I think that answer machine messages have basically been replaced by text messaging. Like you just don't get that many voice messages anymore. No, no. And I remember being so excited when that you if you get home and that blinking light. You're like, yes. <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> um, I, I have a not so nice story of a voicemail message that I left. And I still, I feel guilty about it to this day, but I also feel somewhat justified. My little sister, one of her best friends in elementary school, 
kissed my sister's boyfriend. Um, kissing with extras, as Charlotte would say. Uh-huh. And I was so mad that I left a message on her family's home answering machine telling them what had happened. And I oh, no. like, yeah, like it's interesting because like 25 years later, or no, 20 years later, I guess. Yeah, like about 20 years later. I feel guilty about what I did to that young girl, but like, you know, it's like 12 year old me was just like outraged. So that's what <laughs> now that would have just been a nasty little text I would have said, but instead this girl's dad knew what she did. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so Big leaves a message, another message on uh, her phone. She, he says, oh, I'm, you know, I, I shouldn't have said that, shouldn't have done that. Uh, but uh, please call me. So she does. And uh, uh, that, you know, and then he says, uh, well, he, he actually, he leaves the message that he wants to be with. And then, then in the phone call, he says, oh, forget what I said. Don't, uh, you know, I'm in my bed. I have to s- sleep in it. Um, but then when she's at the hotel, he goes and finds her and they she says i made a big mistake i love you Uh, and then she says and just like that i lost my head and i do have to say i forgot how much they say and just like that me too (laughs) (laughs) i can see why they called it that the show (laughs) to be honest rachel when they came out with the title for the show i it didn't really stick in my head as something that they had said throughout sex in the city a lot. Like I knew that she said, I couldn't help but wonder a lot. And, but I never really realized how much they said that phrase. Yeah, me either. Um, so they end up, uh, they end up smoking in bed together. And I guess that's supposed to be like a, a sign that they are a good match over Aiden, but I just was so annoyed with Carrie for doing this. Like she's Uh, not a child. She's an adult. She should, she should have more control. I thought the smoking was interesting because I also thought it was a sign that big is bad for her in every way, (laughs) even her health. Right. (laughs) Like I was so, I was so angry and I was so sad because look, we all, we all make mistakes. And there was just something though about this that he, Aiden is working on her apartment. That's the only reason she's at the hotel. Big tells her when he's in the car in that phone call, you know, he said before he was leaving Natasha. Now he's like, it'll cost me too much. I'm not doing it. And then she shows up at the hotel, like even big coming back into her life is still back and forth. Like, it's not like it's this thing, this guaranteed thing. He's still jerking her around, like, Mm -hmm. while he's jerking her around. I just, I, it makes me sick. Yeah. And then we have Steve. He, again, is looking for an apartment and uh, he is sleeping on Miranda's couch. Uh, But she finds out that he has a date with a girl executive. Uh, I I don't know her name. Uh, And uh, Miranda says a 34, 34 year old guy with no money and no place to live uh, is uh, just because he's single. He's a catch. A 34 year old woman with a job and a great home uh, is tragic. And I think there's some truth to that. But then you also have the, the whole why is Aiden single, you know, kind of question. So I think that that we we sometimes are sort of suspect of men that don't uh don't have relationships too so i don't know yeah i agree and honestly i don't really think that there's a woman with a great job in an apartment i i don't feel like that's not an attractive quality and i think maybe at least now in our world i think people find that attractive yeah i mean she's saying because the, the, all those you have all those things but just because she's single then she's tragic 
Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's still a little bit of that kind of hanging around, I think, uh, the, the, you know, the whole old maid kind of idea, Yeah. but, yeah. but I also think we sometimes can be real judgmental men too. So. Yeah. So, yeah, we definitely see the girls be very judgmental. Yeah. And Steve is just so charming. He's so much better than big. Yeah, he is so handsome so funny very cute and of course he's gonna get scooped up by someone yeah yeah well so for samantha her plot is definitely my least favorite of this episode and she is dating this guy who has sour spunk (laughs) isn't who is playing that role? Is that Bobby Cannavale? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah it was. he's good. Yeah. He's really funny in it. He is funny. Um, I don't know. I'm just getting a little tired. And I know we have three seasons left to review, but I'm getting a little tired of Samantha and her long list of stuff that uh, she doesn't like. I don't know. No, I mean, Rachel, I think that's a really good point in the fact that for someone who pretends to be so open sexually, there's a long list of stuff that she complains about. And I would hope that someone who's that open sexually would be like, oh, it tasted kind of weird. I hope he's healthy and like move on from it rather than yeah. like, it's disgusting, you know? Yeah. Well, the, the wheatgrass scene was pretty funny. <laughs> that made me because that's gross. Wheatgrass is disgusting. <laughs> I'll pass. Yeah, gross. Uh, yeah, and let's see what else is going on this episode. I did like Carrie. It, she's wearing kind of a like a shirt dress, a structured dress. Yes, that, that was probably my favorite look of the episode. Um, and then yeah, Charlotte gets engaged. Um, and I think that's basically it. Uh. I don't know. I don't love that Carrie makes this choice. I mean, I guess it does add drama, but it just makes you not like your lead character very much, which is not ever a good thing. I think it's a big Carrie Bradshaw is the worst episode. (laughs) It truly is because, I mean, look, for me, and this is like in things I'm consuming or like if I've had friends confide in me about like, infidelity Mm -hmm. or things like that like I'm usually able to see like the thought process and like you know come at it as much as possible from a place of non-judgment but it is really difficult to watch Carrie not only hurt Aiden which would happen with any sort of infidelity but with someone who has treated her like such garbage and continues to do so and is married to someone else like the whole thing it it makes me just sick (laughs) yeah yeah so I don't know I mean I would give this one mm, I do feel like it's my least favorite of the three so I would probably give it 6.5 yeah, I was screaming no at the end because I didn't remember these three episodes that well. I feel like when I watched it, this was like a, a chunk that I miss or I, I haven't watched yeah. maybe yeah. even not ever or definitely not more than once. Yeah. Well, let us know what you think if you have seen these episodes. Maybe we're a little harsh on our numbers. I don't know. <laughs> let us know what you think in the comment section or on Twitter at City Girls Pod. Jax, where can people find you? at Jacqueline C tweets on Twitter and Jacqueline Collier on Instagram. And you make sure you're following the podcast at Homework's Pod and Homework's Podcast all over social media. You can find me at Rachel's Reviews uh, at, at all over social media and on iTunes and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, uh, also make sure that you leave your ratings and reviews on iTunes. We really appreciate it. And uh, if you were watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have the merch store, which is really fun. You can get your City Girls Pod merch. So please take a look at that. And we have the patron group, which if you are a member of the patron group this weekend, this Sunday, we're doing a special live stream where you get to hear my top 40 
uh, TV rom-coms. Uh, so that's going to be a fun. We're trying something different this month. So take a look at that. All the information is in the description. And thanks so much, Jax. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.